Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're checking out a game that I'm not sure exactly what to call actually. The title is simply five underscores. So we could either call the game five underscores or we could call it blank. Or we could call it the game with no name. I don't know, I guess we'll figure it out when I go to post this video. Um, but for now, uh, this is some sort of one of those psychological noise filter horror games that seem to be so pervasive uh, on the indie game scene right now. Uh, this one looked particularly interesting for whatever reason. I don't Something about it just jumped out at me. I guess the decent particle effects and somewhat subdued lighting caught my interest, but it, it has a very heavy noise filter, I have to say, and I believe that this uh, develop, uh, developer is known for using a noise filter in a lot of their other work, and I actually wanted to show another one of their games at some point uh, called Nausea, so I may end up doing that, I'm not sure. So I don't know much about this game. I actually don't really know the trajectory or the scope of it. This may just be the only place we ever see during the entire thing. But we're going to explore a little bit, see if we can find out what's going on, why we're in this room uh, with no view, and what exactly is going on in the, the point of this gameplay. Like, what are we going to get from this? Well, walking around, typical overly sensitive mouse and WASD. Surprisingly small resolution on this one also, it doesn't really give you any options. Uh, I think it's coming out at like 800 by 400, so I might have to scale that. And pardon if it looks a little stretched or weird in the video, you'll... Well, I'll do whatever looks best, I guess. So when you get close to one of the beds, your viewpoint actually zooms in, indicating you can interact with this object. I believe that also happens over here with this... I suppose this is a door, but it looks more like a closet to me. Although I'm gonna assume door, considering there's no other door. Uh, and given, you know, rooms kind of need a way in and out of them unless this room was built around me, in which case we've got a whole different situation to think about. So let's take a nap in the bed. Also curious why you're the only person in this room, yet there are four beds. And I believe we hear a sound of typing and then the door slamming behind us every time and then we're put back on this point as if we were just shoved through it again. So after sleeping, doesn't seem like much is really different. There may be slightly more in the way of black, darkened particles in the air. And you can hear the person who you're playing as, I think they're either sneezing, wheezing, coughing, some kind of combination of that. So this air that is for, full of particulate matter may not be the best thing to be breathing right now, and I guess that might be why that person is doing that. Also trying to figure out what those lights, uh, spark things are about near the light source. Are they fireflies? Are they some sort of bugs? Or is the light actually emitting sparks? In which case that could also be another factor which we're not sure about. So I guess psychologically we're supposed to feel very stressed that we're trapped in this room. There's a, I don't know what the noise filter is really supposed to do. Uh, maybe to give you a reinforced feeling of isolation in some sort of relative darkness, because I guess when your view is kind of restricted from extra light your eyes start to flicker a little bit like that somewhat. Although I'm not sure how accurate that is as a representation. I guess if it was very, very dark I could feel that way, but it almost looks like we're looking through night vision goggles, which, I don't know, maybe that's the case. So I'll sleep in another bed here, see what happens next. Doesn't seem like I can do anything else. More typing. Another door slam. Alright, now we've got... more wheezing and coughing, and what looks like... scorch marks on all the walls? Is it supposed to be mold? Is this room getting perpetually more decayed? Is this uh, time passing? Or is there some sort of like pyromancer activity going on in this room? Either way, that sounds interesting. Can I leave? No, okay, when I click on this it makes a slamming sound indicating that I cannot leave. Just in case you couldn't hear. So it seems like we're meant to just keep sleeping in this bed, or any of these beds, as long as we can stand to keep doing that. Oh, it may not actually be typing in between each room transition. It may be some sort of, uh, like, springs in the bed from you getting out. But we never get to see what's out there yet. I don't know about isolation. Like, this doesn't make me feel particularly isolated, even though we're in just one room. It's like... There needs to be a little bit more tension to get us to that point where we're worried about that. Right now we have absolutely no point of reference aside from these beds. There's like nothing that gives us any character, and I guess there's like moderate level of sterile looking decor on the wall. 
uh, given that it's got that stripe. Which is actually just making me think of, like, the archives from GoldenEye, except that was green. Also curious how tall these ceilings are. Like, they are so tall you can't see the top of them. So, like, what's going on up there? Probably nothing. Like, are you planning on housing a room full of giants? Yeah, the coughing is getting a little annoying. Oh, I think there might have been breathing that time. And it looks like the scorch marks are moving up the wall now. So what do we think about this as a narrative so far? Really, all that's happened... Oh, there's an extra bed. Hello? Is that creepy? I don't know. Not really. All that's really happened is I've really just clicked on these beds over and over again. We've had a little bit of exposition in the fact that the screen went dark. And there's been a slight change in the room each time. I should probably sleep on this bed if I can, since it's the new member here. Is this supposed to indicate that there's five people and maybe we're all taking turns? I don't know. We've never been in the room at the same time, so that, that would be interesting to see more than just me in here. It also may just be the, the door opening, that uh, hinge sound. Alright, we've got maybe more scorch marks. I don't know, I can't really tell. I'm still not even sure if these are scorch marks. They're just some kind of decals. Oh, different sound, I think, that time. I don't know if you caught it. It sounded like someone down a long, like, narrow passageway, like a heating vent or something, gasping. It's a little slightly creepy, I suppose. So we're still suffocating to death. Maybe we just need an inhaler, really. Okay, the scorch marks continue to move up the walls. And now we've got six beds. Is the room just going to keep filling up with beds? may also be worth mentioning that the wheezing coughing sounds are actually coming from different stereo directional points. I don't know how easy that is for you to tell since I'm sure the sound has turned quite a ways down. You may not be able to even notice really uh, the differences, but I'm playing it with the headphones on and I can actually hear this distinctly coming from the left and the right of my character, indicating maybe we're in a room full of ghosts. Maybe there's some distinct spectral activity going on and we're, uh, we're just not able to tell. I guess if we look at it that way, this seems a bit more compelling, but right now it seems a little bit slow. I mean, also slow considering I've just been taking my freaking time. That far away cough is definitely the creepier sound. Alright. Call me a cynic, but I have a pretty strong suspicion that what we're building up to here is nothing. <laughs> Um, I'm kind of hoping we get to go maybe outside of this room and see what's going on here, or at least get some background information, but I just, I've seen a few of these types of games, and it seems like often the payoff is never, you know, as big as you'd hope. It kind of seems a little bit like we're building this around what kind of gameplay conventions we're willing to make at the moment, and uh, I guess they had a bed model, which is pretty easily repeatable, and uh, the single door model, and then a room with some casual texturing and these little decal marks. I'd like to see a little bit more ambition. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Can we get a move on now? Let's see if anything changes. I mean, clearly we're building up to some sort of a crescendo here. We've got another bed. Okay. Is this the medical reception, like, ward for the denizens of Silent Hill after they've moved on and been deceased? And declared deceased. I mean, this is reminding me a lot of, like, the ashes going through the air. You know, it was supposed to be, like, a coal miner's town, and there was a fire under the ground, and everybody was killed or something, and the whole town was turned into ghosts. And then, uh, of course, that the whole situation with the daughter getting lost. Okay, I, I get it. Lots of beds. Clearly we're in a room full of ghosts at this point. Okay, the faraway wheezing reverb sound from the, what sounds like an older person, like a man, is definitely becoming more prevalent. Because most of these voices have sounded like children, 
and also the size of the beds would lend me to believe that as well. Probably putting a little bit too much detective work into this, but I'm just going with what I can here. Oh, nasty. Like a horrible smoker's cough going on here. Alright, the room is almost completely full of beds now. I mean, obviously this is just supposed to be a psychological thing here. I mean, we're not probably supposed to have that much uh, ambition in our gameplay expectations. Okay. I just want to let that sink in for a moment. So aside from just the crazy flickering, which doesn't seem to be emanating from this light, uh, it seems to be emanating from within. So this is like a, one of those, like a horrible don't smoke infomercial. I think the room might also be getting darker. It's clearly getting desaturated, but is it getting darker? Oh god, this is getting creepy though. I believe the ceiling also is extending away from us. Isn't that what's going on? I'm pretty sure the light's going up. I think it's very subtle though, it's kind of hard to tell, but the, the light is clearly way, way higher than it used to be, and the room is just getting darker and darker. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to get dropped out to the desktop any moment now. Can I get another... Oh, is there... I think there may be people in the beds now, but I'm having a hard time being able to tell. There seems to be figures now, and the light is almost gone. Yeah, it's definitely a bit on the creepier side now. And now my mouse pointer showed up, so that's probably that. Screen's totally black. Alright, well it looks like that is going to be that. Uh, the game which shall not be named, apparently, uh, that seems to be the conclusion to it. So all we really did was just click on the bed a bunch of times. I, this is an interesting conundrum to be in as far as critiquing a game as far as its gameplay. This is really more of a visual poetry type of thing, and, and it's, uh... I, I use poetry a little bit in a strange way here, but... I assume that you could read this as a kind of a dark poem. And the fact that there are visuals are really just to complement that, but really all we did was just go on this little journey of iterating a statement a bunch of times, which eventually led to a conclusion. So it's like a short story, uh, but a lot of it is left to be ambiguous. And I'm fairly certain there were bodies in those beds at the end, but I'm really still not sure what to make of any of it. Uh, given that the name is intentionally left blank, I'm pretty sure that that was all meant to be intentional, that we're supposed to read into it however we see fit. And I kind of detailed how I read into it as we went through this, so hopefully that didn't seem too off-base to you guys, but I'm always up for discussing this all further. I'm really not sure how I feel about these types of uh, experiences. It's really hard to call them games. There was no gameplay involved. We just walked around and did a little bit of... As, as limited as one could possibly call exploring. I mean, we had one single room to look around in with one single bed model and a door, which we could not leave. There were a limited number of sound effects. There were uh, really just filters and little else. Um, I, I like the idea of them. I'm not sure if I like this one in particular. The execution to it seemed like it... I got what it was trying to do, but it was so predictable. And I've seen so many of these now at this point, I feel like as soon as I start them, I almost sort of know how this is going to end. It always seems to end in some sort of like, okay, everything's fading to black, absolute terror and horror. Um, it's like they're closing up the well in the ring or something. It seems like they're going, kind of going for that. Just like absolute dread and desperation and terror and fear. Only, I, I didn't quite get to that point. And when you have that sort of a moment for it to really be successful in a poetic sense, I feel, needs to really build up and have some characterization so you care about what's going on. In this case, it was also just completely arbitrary. You know, I didn't have anything perspective-wise to put in uh, my own thoughts into. It was just whatever I could read from this fairly... And I don't mean this to be rude to the developer, but it is a sort of a bland environment, and then probably intentionally so. 
uh, to give you that feeling of being in some sort of a clinic or just a really depressing, sad space. And maybe what we should read into this is just more about, you know, the the way that human minds can read into architecture and, I don't know, I feel like I'm stretching it a bit now at this point, but I, I think that's probably about as far as we can go with this idea, having stared at this black screen now for quite a while. I'm sure you want to move on with your day. <laughs> but uh, we will wrap this episode up. Uh, still not sure what to call this game, the underscore game, blank title game, uh, the game that shall not be named, but I don't know that I could really recommend that you go download it. I think we've seen everything there is to see. Uh, unless you want to just pass this on to a friend who may, you know, want to experience this firsthand. Maybe you can go through it together and have a, a nice discussion afterward. Actually, that seems like probably the best way to go about it. So that'll wrap us up for this one. Another episode of Indie Impressions. Thank you for watching. As always, remember to head on over to the website, www.indie-impressions.com. Check out all the videos I've ever done in the series. Very, very close to number 300 now as of this recording. So feel free to go browse them all by uh, distribution method by developer, by genre, whatever tickles your fancy, feel free to type some stuff into that search box, and also make sure you stop by the forums before you leave. And then we've got our Facebook page, facebook.com slash indie impressions. If you'd like to leave a like on that, you'll get every day's new video delivered right into your Facebook stream, and then you can stay up on whatever's going on new with the channel as far as news updates and the occasional contest. Uh, it just takes a second if you'd like to leave a like, I promise I won't spam you, but it does help me out and uh, makes things a little easier for you, hopefully. And lastly, if you're an indie developer or you just want to leave a comment, criticism, suggestion, or question, and you just want to reach me directly, at Rockley Smile on Twitter is the quickest way to do that. Uh, but I also do have a contact form right on the website, as well as I'll take PMs via Reddit, YouTube, or Twitter. So whatever works for you works for me, and I'm definitely on the versatile side. I'm, this coughing has got to go any minute now. So uh, let's wrap this one up. Thank you again for watching. Make sure you come back again tomorrow for another awesome indie game, and I hope you have a lovely night, and I hope you can breathe well. Take care, guys. Talk to you later.